Now for a lot of folks who visit Los Angeles, it's all about seeing movie premieres or trying to find out where their tents of town heroes hang out. But in truth, Los Angeles is a city of neighborhoods, very interesting and complicated neighborhoods with little gems of history buried in them. A lot of that history is black history that's underseen or unknown. My name is Nelson George, and for blackatlas.com, I'm gonna take you to a Los Angeles you won't find in any movie. Many tourists have the idea that LA is a place you have to drive everywhere to have a good time. And in fact, LA is a series of little villages, really, where you can park your car, have food, have entertainment without actually having to drive everywhere. One of those areas is actually Hollywood, which is undergoing a really beautiful development. So I'm on Ivar between Sunset and Selma. Uh, there's this new bookstore, there's a whole little mall, like mini arts mall. Um, there's lots of cool restaurants around here, both health food, soul food, you name it, it's around here. And one of my favorite record stores in the world, it's right down the block, and that's Amoeba. Not only sell vinyl, but you can sell your own vinyl, you can sell your CDs there, and actually uh, get rid of your old collection and get great new music uh, and great old music at a discount. And of course, the Cinerama Dome, one of the great movie theaters in the country. If you're coming to LA, Hollywood is actually not a bad place to get around and have a good time. I played basketball in the Hollywood Y many times and never knew it was part of the legacy of one of America's leading black architects. The late Paul Williams played an integral part in the development of the Los Angeles skyline. The uh, jet-themed building, that elaborate spider-like structure in LAX, he designed. He helped design the Shrine Auditorium, which every award show in the world has played at. So many celebrity homes in the LA area have been designed by him, including homes for Bill Bojangles Robinson and Frank Sinatra out in Palm Springs. The irony of Paul Williams' career is that he was a black man building buildings in white areas that he probably couldn't live in. Many of the areas he worked in, Beverly Hills certainly, uh, had covenants which restricted the movement of black people into them. In other words, if you were a white homeowner, you could not sell your home by law to a black or Hispanic or Asian homeowner. So when you come to LA, look at the landscape of LA just a little bit differently. Mr. Paul Williams helped create it. The so Dara Heights alongside Baldwin Hills, these are traditional black middle class areas of Los Angeles homeowners, very established folks. One place they come to hang out is this little mall down here where you have uh, Magic Johnson's TGI Fridays and a Magic Johnson Starbucks. Across the street there's a daily chess game. Here at the TGI Fridays you have a uh, big single scene, especially Friday, Saturday night. So if you're in LA and you're looking for uh, a magical experience, come on down here. Now one of my favorite places to go when I, I visit Los Angeles is Santa Monica got so many different flavors. You got the pier, which is very old school amusement park rides and penny arcade games. You have the Third Avenue Promenade, which has movie theaters and shops. You have uh, Ivy by the Shore, which is a very high-end restaurant. And you also have yoga, some of the best yoga classes in California. And I just found out recently a very important piece of black beach history is here in Santa Monica. The plaque I'm about to read from is located right by the beach toward the end of Pico near the famous Shutters Hotel. The Inkwell, a place of celebration and pain. The beach near this site between Bay and Bricknell Streets, known by some as the Inkwell, was an important gathering place for African Americans long after racial restrictions on public beaches were abandoned in 1927. In 1940s, Nick Gabadon, a Santa Monica high school student and the first documented black surfer, taught himself how to surf here at Santa Monica Beach. So this uh, testament to black history speaks to two things. One is the history of racial harassment and segregation in Southern California, and the embrace of the Southern California lifestyle by black residents here. I'm in uh, the Mert Park section of Los Angeles. I'm at one of my favorite bookstores, S.O. Wan Books, where I've read many, many times over the years. I'm Tom Hamilton. I'm one of the co-owners of S.O. Wan Books, and we've uh, been around about 22 years. Uh, La Merde has always been a cultural center, where Marla Gibbs, right. when she was here, she had the Vision Complex. Where the uh, parking lot is, she had another little theater there. It's a good place to spend an afternoon, especially on the weekend. They have a farmer's market. You're one of the longest, I would say, one of the longest standing black 
cultural institutions in the area. The primary reason for opening up the bookstore was to try to get more information out to the community. To try to say, okay, look, there's a need for books. Maybe we can help by, you know, by stacking books, by getting books out there. Pretty much everybody in, in black history, Toni Morrison, Nicky Giovanni, mm -hmm. we've had we had Richard Pryor. We've had all of Hollywood. We had Shaq, uh, Kareem. We've had Obama twice. Who comes here? Then? And we've had some some of the very best customers in the world. I mean, they've just they've supported us through hell and high water. And I'll tell you what it reminds me. Of. It reminds me of Harlem when I used to go to into Harlem and I go to Liberation Bookstore. Wow. It, it's nice to come into Essawan. You hear some good music. Meet some good people. That's the one bookstore, uh, Lemurk Park, Los Angeles, California, a destination well worth uh, getting at. My name is Nelson George. Till next time, catch you in the air.